Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is January 16, 2022. Howard, I see you've been doing laundry in the back in the background. What's going on with that? Yeah. It's uh, Rachel's uh, home. So that is her mess. This is her her room, which has become when she's not here my room. Your office. That is correct. How are you feeling this week? I feel pretty good. You feel pretty good, huh? Yeah. He hasn't okay. been that bad. All right, let's go back to to the markets. <laughs> I mean. I think from my perspective, the indices are in correction mode. Like they're making lower highs. The NASDAQ 100 tried to rally early in the week, was rejected below its declining 20 day. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of holding on a thin thread here. Uh, the S&P 500 holding somewhat better, uh, mostly thanks to oil and gas uh, industrials and uh, financials mm -hmm. uh, in some part. Small caps are looking the worst, uh, testing their uh, the lows of their of the really really long uh, range here near two yeah. eight. So uh, if that level is lost, we might see some acceleration of selling. The probably the good news is that earnings season starts this week, and uh, for for the next four weeks, the market will pay more attention to earnings. And not so much to the mm -hmm. to the macro aspect to uh, the increase in interest rates. So that's about it uh, in terms of relative strength. Anything outside of the basic material space, I would I would highlight uh, semiconductors. Definitely the strongest sec sector in tech, the strongest group in tech. Uh, yeah, semis, the, semis still look great, which, you know, the, the economy's healthy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the market is always looking six months ahead. So maybe the market is either seeing something or just just in case uh, discounting yeah. something that might happen, mm -hmm. but it might not. And uh, yeah. we're definitely seeing that rotation from growth uh, into value um, in the past few weeks but also in the past year as well uh, if you if you take a look at many of the like high momentum high growth stocks like we're, we're talking bio some of them don't even have earnings but let's call them high risk high beta stocks like biotech uh, internet retail software mm -hmm. those three groups have been the worst hit and many of them are down 50 yeah. percent or more uh, for the past but they months. should be right interest rates are going up and you don't yeah. have earnings like i look at virgin galactic like anything when you enter a rising interest rate environment i'm forgetting space because that was just a bad deal from the get-go you know, like, it could probably be a zero but you know anything frontier space um I mean, stuff that's not I, needed. IPO, the, the ETF, it's a good representative for or the arts. Yeah. Uh, so so it's a good idea. So so stuff that hasn't proven itself yet. People in a higher interest rate environment, and we do listen, it's all coming off relatively low numbers. Like we just refinanced still well under two and a half percent. So in our own fear of just locking stuff in, it's silly not to just redo stuff for 10 years and lock in stuff is. so people should be doing what they can do to save real money here if you really are concerned about rising any trades interested even if you're not locking in stuff again at two and a half percent is insane not to because your mortgage is your biggest uh, asset for most people as it relates to stocks you know not all of us are going to now become experts all the epidemiologists are now oil experts and basic material <laughs> experts and financial experts i doubt it now for swing traders and traders uh sure but i think you pulled up the charts that matter the semiconductors yeah. uh, you know i said it last week the x's over the q's right xlf and xle uh i'm going to share my screen i'm going to kind of just all right uh, Make it stop, easier for you. So stop, hang on. Tell me when you can see sharing. my screen. Okay, can we see can it? see it. Yep. Yeah. Right. So we. This is Koi Fan. Everybody should have. It. This is your home screen. 
You can set it up any way you want. But here's here's the last 10 years. You see the NASDAQ up 600%, okay? Tech obviously is, is in charge. That's why I've always said QQQ is over SPY, but now things are changing. Rates are going up. And as you saw from the IPO index that Ivan showed, uh, when rates go up, stuff without unproven things, even in tech, hang on, shoot, sorry. Let me just, I'll get better at driving, but I want to show people this. Um, things with unproven cash flows, people dump. And that's what institutions do. You know, they get paid, they got to show their LPs and their investors that they're not stupid. Uh, and so they're as guilty as their regular retail person. The idea is to get in front of this. Okay. And a lot of growth people, you know, have just been drunk that this will always happen. So you can just see the inklings of a rollover. And then I've brought in the blue charts at the end, the EEM and the energy to show you like how bad it's been for, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to pull up the full commodity index, which is going up as well, because gold's been a dog too, but you can just see how bad it's been for the rest of the world versus US. The emerging markets, a mess for the last 10 years, averaging 5% a year. And energy just finally swinging positive. Uh, as, and remember in March, 2020, energy went negative. So you can see the gaps, okay? So, so a lot of institutional money will start trying to play the gaps, especially if they think interest rates are gonna stay higher and that inflation persists because the Fed, is kind of caught here, right? And and they've been pretty clear that things are gonna change. So that's kind of the environment and you can't, it doesn't mean you have to go buy energy stocks, but there's nothing against having a higher cash level until growth kind of proves itself again. And so you can easily flip through some of this stuff. The other thing is stock to 25, which I share every week. I mean, do you really want to be in Schlumberger, Halliburton? Because you can, you can go buy, these leading energy stocks, they've had a great run, uh, but they're just kind of breaking out. I know they're not. Like, so these things are still in very long-term downtrends, but these are what's working right now and gapping higher. Yeah, but, most oil stocks are up 20% year to date, so. Yeah, so, so that's what's yeah. working, you know? So, you know, you can scan this free email once a week and you can kind of see that, uh, I mean, Wells Fargo, we saved them. It's a criminal organization, you know, whatever they but do we want to own Wells Fargo for the long term? Um, you know, maybe they go, maybe in a rising interest rate environment, they can go buy a neobank and modernize themselves because they have, what's their market cap? They have a uh, 225 billion market cap. I'm not saying management's going to get smart. But there's a case to be said that like of the hundred neobanks from Chime on down that are even Chime, which is supposedly 10 to $15 billion. What does that cost for Wells Fargo to just 10% of 5% of their company to go, to go become Chime and keep their whole backend business. So there is a case, you know, you can't stick your head in the sand and here's the XLF, the, the market caps of these behemoths uh, that we saved in 08, um can go do some damage in the uh ipo market and buy some broken ipo so that's the first thing um the overall thing that i see ivan is that you know vix a little bit elevated at 20 but not hu hugely elevated the um the markets are kind of acting normal considering that uh you know we're in this kind of period where we've got inflation that hasn't been factored in in 40 years and higher interest rates. So I think unless you want to kind of move where the puck is going and start trading energy stocks and commodity stocks, it's going to be very tough in, in growth world. And it's just been what five years of momentum Mondays where every dip could be bought in growth, but yeah. there's some fundamental differences now with rates going up in inflation and you know levels not seen in 40 50 years does that make sense to you it makes sense but uh, if you're an active trader you need to adopt uh some yeah power. i mean this is this is for both you know for me i can't adopt i don't have the time and that's why i started saying months ago a few months ago that indexes 
are probably a better place to be because at least the indexes, you know, they may be weighted high to tech right now, but over time, the indexes at least give you the exposure to these other sectors. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you don't have the time, now would be a great time to think about, you know, selling some of your losers and, you know, figuring out how you want to index a little bit. Or like Ivan can do is just go, a ticker's a ticker and a price action is a price action, you know, go start trading Wells Fargo and some of the energy stocks, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can, or you can just short the ones that are in, in downtrends. Yeah. Uh, I mean, software stocks give down so I will uh, defer back to you. Let me get rid of just, the screen. Okay, let me see. I'll stop uh, screen sharing. I'll stop it and then I'll uh, take over. Let's see. Share. Okay, so now you see my screen, right? Yep. Okay. So software and tech in general has done so well for the past five to 10 years. And so many people just are in love and with their long-term performance that I have a feeling that many people don't have an exit strategy. Right. And yes, you know, occasionally you're going to catch Amazon and Apple that, or Google where every dip is viable and they'll continue to go higher. But in eight out of 10 cases, you're not going to catch Amazon. You're going to catch, you know, something like Virgin Galactic where it will go up 1,000, 3,000% and then it will give back uh, 50% to 90% of its gain. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm always saying, you know, Hold them, you know, follow trends, but have an exit strategy because not yeah. all of those stocks are going to make it in the long term. So it, it would be. No, I remember uh, pull up Cloudflare, for example, great company. I remember selling it on the way up at 100, 120, 160, 200. A lot of people were like, you're crazy. I mean, why would I pay the taxes? And yeah, a lot of my friends who were, you know, had yeah. 10 baggers. You know, now have five baggers or, or four baggers, but now they're thinking of selling and paying the tax now. You know, yeah, I, really, I, know. I really think, you know, doing things for tax reasons, if, if you're investing, uh, unless you're running the company and have like inside information and not like elite ones, unless you are running the company, not selling something uh, because of taxes. Yeah. I, I, on I, I the down way or up way is, is a terrible idea. You have yeah. to... And so now a lot of people are caught in companies like Cloudflare. I look at DigitalOcean, which is a company I started buying back um, because I was selling it at 100, uh, you know, on the way up. Um, you know, here's a stock could be back in the 40s or 50s. I mean, long-term yeah. growth is great, but if they get, if interest rates forces these things to be repriced, these are expensive stocks and can surprise you to the downside. There's, the growth isn't going away. The cloud is not going away. Uh, the margins are not going away, but you're seeing an incredible repricing of these assets. And at the same time, uh, if commodity prices are going higher, these energy companies have so much leverage. Uh, again, I don't understand them and I don't trade them, but they have incredible leverage. Uh, and they're all been in you know, reducing capacity for 10 years. So if people, and remember, we've been closed, the country's been half closed for two years. So if, if April, the market reopens and everybody's going back to work, imagine the shortages that we'll have then if everybody's traveling and well, uh, moving. The market is kind of discounting that. I mean, as we say, it's always tries to uh, look six months ahead. But yeah. back to your comments on not selling for tax reasons, I actually hear absolutely the same thing from several people. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to sell because we don't want to pay taxes. And it seems like every new generation of investors kind of repeat the same mistakes. Um, yeah. I think taxes, not selling for tax reasons, it's, it's a stupid reason, especially if you're, if you're trading individual stocks, because especially momentum stocks, because many of them are going to, yeah. You know, if you have substantial corrections, 50% or more, and, and they might not come back. I mean, an index, that's a, that's a bit different thing because an index like the S&P, they rebalance them every, once a year. So yeah. they basically Which is, do, again, why... do the pruning for you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, um, I think, listen, I, I don't love this market because it's not for me, but you can see, you know, Ivan's easy to follow Ivan. Um, and you can see, wow, some of these charts look fantastic. What, yeah, are the month, what do the monthlies look like on these? 
the monthly are not that beautiful, but yeah. weekly and weekly and daily they are. And the other sector, other than semis um, and outside of basic materials, the all the car manufacturers have done really well. And <coughs> we're talking like legacy car makers like Toyota and yeah, Ford and, and and Honda and BMW. Mm. Um, all of them are kind of trying to catch up. Obviously, Tesla is the big leader, and we're also seeing those the Chinese one. XPV kind of holding well, yeah. building new base, uh, yeah. AI. So the car manufacturing definitely a hot space along with alongside uh, semis and TSM, as I said, reported earnings, beta estimates, uh, gap to all time highs basically on uh, Wednesday wow. or Thursday. And yeah. they said that the, the biggest growth they saw was uh, demand from uh, car makers, like 10% growth. Yeah, uh, definitely. Those are two hot spaces in tech right now, uh, yep. other than the basic materials. Yep, and 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 as always has happened in semiconductors, and I got this wrong, was these everybody builds up capacity, much like oil, the unwinding of yeah. capacity, and then and and then everybody's left holding the bag. That so cycle has been much better, maybe the best ever in semis, which has you know fooled people like me. Yeah, the semiconductor equip equipment stocks, especially that group, extremely strong, near all time highs, all of them. Yeah. So, I mean, some of them starting to break out. So, yeah. So, I don't know. I, 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 uh, it's a really interesting moment in the market. You know, if interest rates reverse here, all, you know, growth will definitely kick it back in and energy will, will crumble. Um, but it doesn't look that way. It looks like the Fed's kind of stuck. It, anything yeah. is possible. Like I don't really, I would be really, really surprised if interest rates really uh, have a significant acceleration from here. But you know, um, it's possible, but I don't think it's it would happen. <laughs> That's why I started buying a few of these, you know, down fifty percent software stocks. So we'll see. Definitely not uh, something I want to do full time. All right, buddy. Have a great week. Um, All right, you too, Clark. Glad you're feeling better. Have a good week, everybody.